Okay, we're in Deuteronomy 3. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we have together and please help us understand the knowledge and wisdom that we retain today. We love you, Lord, and we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, the defeat of King Og of Bashan. Bashan. I'm sorry, I still don't know how to pronounce these names. Moses said to Israel, when we turned onto the road that leads to Bash Bashan, Bashan, King Og of Bashan led out his whole army to fight us at Edre. But the Lord told me, Moses, don't be afraid of King Og. I'm going to help you defeat him and his army and take over his land. D destroy him and his people just as you did with the Amorite King Sihon of Heshbon. The Lord our God helped us destroy Og and his army and conquer his entire kingdom of Bashan, including the Argob region. His kingdom had lots of villages and 60 towns with high walls and gates that locked with bars. We completely destroyed them all, killing everyone but keeping the livestock and everything else of value. The Hebrew word for completely destroyed means that the town was given completely to the Lord and since it could not be used for normal purposes anymore, it had to be destroyed. Every person was killed and sometimes all the animals as well. Okay, Sihon and Og had ruled Amorite kingdoms east of the Jordan River. Their land stretched from the Arnon River Gorge in the south to Mount Hermon in the north, and we captured it all. And don't forget, these people were worshiping false idols. So, it's, and doing other very bad things. Okay, Sihon and Nog had ruled Amorite kingdoms east of the Jordan, Jordan River. Their land stretched from the Arnon River Gorge in the south to Mount Hermon in the north, and we captured it all. Mount Hermon is called Mount Sirion by the people of Sidon, and it is called Mount Senor by the Amorites. We captured all the towns in the highlands, all of Gilead, and all of Bashan as far as Salika and Edre, two of the towns that Og had ruled. Og's coffin. King Og was the last of the Rephaim. So maybe last of the half angel, half human people. And his coffin or bed is in the town of Rabbah in Ammon. And it is made of hard black rock. The Hebrew text has iron, which probably refers to basalt, a hard black rock. Okay, it is made of hard black rock and is four meters long and almost two meters wide. There, that's the verse that I was telling you about when they were just, when I was telling you like how tall the giants were. Cubits. Come on, that's the American standard version. Why would you use cubits? <sighs> Come on, where's that version that Well, whatever, okay, so. Four meters long, that's at least 14, almost 14 feet long and two meters wide, so that's like seven feet wide, oh my gosh. They were huge. Okay. The land east of the Jordan River is divided. Moses said to Israel, I gave some of the land and towns we captured to the tribes of Reuben and Gad. Their shares started at the Arnon River Gorge in the south, took in the town of 
arrower on the edge of the gorge and went far enough north to include the southern half of the Gilead region. The northern part of their land went as far east as the upper Jabbok River Gorge, which formed their border with the Ammonites. I also gave them the eastern side of the Jordan River Valley from Lake Galilee, uh, which was earlier called Lake Chinnereth. There are a ton of little notes in here. South to the Dead Sea, Hebrew, the Sea of Arabah, the Salt Sea. Below the slopes of Mount Pisgah, I gave the northern half of Gilead and all the Bashan region to half the tribe of Manasseh, or East Manasseh. Bashan had belonged to King Og in the Argob region, and Bashan used to be called the land of the Rephaim. Jair, or Jair, I don't know. From the Manasseh tribe conquered the Argob region as far west as the kingdoms of Geshur and Makkah. The Israelites even started calling Bashan by the name villages of Jair, or Havoth Jair, and that is still its name. I gave the northern half of Gilead to the Makur clan, one of the clans of the Manasseh tribe. At that time, I told the men of Reuben, Gad, and East Manasseh, the Lord our God told me to give you this land with its towns, and that's what I have done. Now your wives and children can stay here with your large flocks of sheep and goats and your large herds of cattle. But all of you men that can serve in our army must cross the Jordan River and help the other tribes because they are your relatives. The Lord will let them defeat the enemy nations on the west side of the Jordan and take their land. Afterwards, you can come back here to the land I gave you. Then I told Joshua, you saw how the Lord our God helped us destroy King Sihon and King Og. So don't be afraid. Wherever you go, the Lord will fight on your side and help you destroy your enemies. God refused to let Moses enter Canaan. Moses said to Israel, At that time I prayed and begged, Our Lord, it seems that you have just begun to show me your great power. No other God in the sky or on earth is able to do the mighty things that you do. The land west of the Jordan is such good land. Please let me cross the Jordan and see the hills and the Lebanon mountains. But the Lord was angry with me because of you people. And he refused to listen. That's enough, he said. I don't want to hear any more. Climb to, to the top of Mount Pisgah and look north, south, east, and west. Take a good look, but you're not going to cross the Jordan River. Joshua will lead Israel across the Jordan to take the land. So help him be strong and brave and tell him what he must do. After this, we stayed in the valley at Beth Peor. Okay, Deuteronomy 4. Dang, these are long chapters with lots of notes. Why couldn't these put, they put these notes like in the earlier books so that, whatever, it's okay. Israel must obey God. Moses said, Israel, listen to the laws and teachings. If you obey them, then you will live and you will go in and take the land that, Lord, that the Lord is giving you. He is the God your ancestors worshipped, and now he is your God. I am telling you everything he has commanded, so don't add anything or take anything away. You saw how he killed everyone who worshipped the God Baal Peor. But all of you that were faithful to the Lord your God are still alive today. No other nation has laws that are as fair as the ones the Lord my God told me to give you. Very true. If you faithfully obey them when you enter the land, you will show other nations how wise you are. In fact, everyone that hears about your laws will say, that great nation certainly is wise. And what makes us greater than other nations? We have a God who is close to us and answers our prayers. You must be very careful not to forget the things you have seen God do for you. I need to bookmark that. <clears throat> Keep reminding yourselves and tell your children and grandchildren as well. 
Do you remember the day you stood in the Lord's presence at Mount Sinai? The Lord said, Moses, bring the people of Israel here. I want to speak to them so they will obey me as long as they live, and so they will teach their children to obey me too. Mount Sinai was surrounded by deep dark clouds and fire went up in the sky. You came to the foot of the mountain and the Lord spoke to you from the fire. You could hear him and understand what he was saying, but you couldn't see him. The Lord said he was making an, an agreement with you and he told you that your part of the agreement is to obey the Ten Commandments. Then the Lord wrote these commandments on two flat stones. Remember Moses smashed the first two stones because he was pissed at the Israelites. Okay. Verse 14. That's when the Lord commanded me to give you the laws and teachings you must obey in the land that you will conquer west of the Jordan River. Don't worship idols. Moses said to Israel, when God spoke to you from the fire, he was invisible. So be careful not to commit the sin of worshiping idols. Don't make idols to be worshipped, whether they are shaped like men, women, animals, birds, reptiles, or fish. Uh, uh, I know a lot of... Oh my gosh. There's so many people... Who do that. I mean, who are taught to do that, you know. 